Mark good? He was on there. You're on. Good. Good evening. Welcome to the Littleton Select Board meeting of July 27th, 2020. We are going to begin tonight's meeting by entering into executive session uh, pursuant to Master General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A. If I could have a motion, please. I got it. Move to the Select Board vote pursuant to Master General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A. Two, to conduct a strategy session in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel. Three, to conduct, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body. And the chair so declares. Three, I'm sorry. No. Uh, to discuss, yeah. Um, so there's three different reasons for us going into executive session, if I understand correctly, right, Council? Each of them? That's correct. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not familiar with the, um, the format the piece. Okay. To discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, if an open meeting may be may have detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body, and the chair so declares. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, um, please in indicate by saying aye. Mr. Glady. Aye. Mr. Knox. Aye. Mr. DeCoast. Aye. Mr. Nordhaus. Aye. And Chairwoman Napoli is aye. So we are going to. The chair does declare. The chair does declare yes. that we will now enter into executive session. That, that our negotiating position would be damaged. If we op did an open session. Okay. Detrimental. On the B, right. Okay. Um, and so we're now going to enter into an executive session. We will be resuming our regularly scheduled meeting, hopefully by 7.30 p.m. this evening. Are we going to do two matters in executive session? We're doing three. Two of them are two of them are um, union. The negotiation with our union personnel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. I think so. Great. Thank you. We'll be back. I need to mute my computer, maybe? Maybe if I mute Some my computer? Science fiction movies. Are we good? I think so. Blind Is it going? Science. Not yet, I don't think. I could, I'd normally see live on the top left. Let me know when, Nina. Good evening and welcome to the Select Board meeting of Monday, July 27th, 2020. We just completed executive session and we are prepared to begin our regularly scheduled meeting. We're going to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight's meeting is going to begin with department and board updates uh, to begin requiring dogs on leashes at town-owned space areas. We're going to review a new proposed language to the leash law. Uh, Littleton Landfill Post-Closure Compliance Assistance, Fiscal Year 21. We're going to discuss a proposal and review some costs. Then we're going to continue a discussion on operational considerations for the reopening of Town Hall and the emergency staffing um, policy. Then we'll move on to public input and members' updates. At 8 p.m., we are scheduled to discuss the purchase of town-owned land, Manchester Drive, parcels U14-1010 and U14-102-0. At 8.10, we're scheduled to discuss um, we're gonna, special town meeting. We're going to review the date options, uh, adopt a timeline, call the special town meeting, open the warrant, and discuss article topics proposed by the select board. 
We're going to move on to 8.30 p.m. to collective bargaining agreements, followed by a discussion regarding the select board stipends and a vote of the rule of necessity. At 8.40 p.m., we're scheduled to discuss employment agreements with the deputy police chief and deputy fire chief. At 8.50 p.m., we will have the town administrator updates, including the consolidation claim authorization form for opioid litigation, a vote to authorize the town administrator to, uh, to sign that claim form, an application to use Littleton Common to raise awareness of and advocate for the Black Lives Matter movement. This is scheduled, um, the request is for August 8th. And then another application to use Little, Littleton Common on August 15th for the commemoration of India's Independence Day, followed by a review of proposed changes to the host community agreement with the Harvest Club, and then a historical commission's request for a support letter regarding 12 Robinson Road. We will then, um, at 9 p.m., review our minutes, and then we will adjourn the select board's meeting for today. So we're going to begin our um, open up the meeting right now with um, item number three, uh, review of the leash law um, and proposed new language. Um, so I will lead off on this. Some mail. Oh, sorry, mail. I'm going to read the mail. Certainly. Um, we received a letter from Sonia Lodge, a tenant board member of Pine Tree Park, thanking the board for their work throughout the pandemic. A uh, letter from the Harvest Club uh, regarding a community outreach meeting proposed for August 4th via Zoom. And a letter from National Grid on their notification of further herbicide treatment for vegetation management. Great, thank you. It was nice to receive the thank you letter, the thank you note. It's very Sonia. kind and appreciative. Um, we don't always get those, so when we do. Sonia is very thoughtful. Yeah, no, it was very, very nice. So thank you. Um, and is that it, you know, for time? All right, perfect. So now we're on to, um, now we're on to item number three. Um, this is a proposal that I brought through for discussion before the board regarding the leash law. And I believe um, Chief Pinar was going to join in on the call. I don't know if he's um, joined us yet or not. He's being promoted as we speak. Excellent. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, Madam Chair. Hi. Thank you for joining us. So I um, had reached out to the Chief regarding the leash law um, in, in the town of Littleton. There's been some discussion uh, on Facebook regarding the leash law, as, as I'm sure some of you may have seen on Littleton Trails um, and other um, social media sites. Just with respect to um, having dogs, specifically um, having dogs off leash, there's been some um, you know, requests to permit dogs to be off leash, um, while others um, are you know, oppose that. Uh, clearly, our trails are being used a lot more um, because of the pandemic, people are taking, have more time and are taking more opportunities to enjoy outdoor spaces and public gathering places. So there was, I had reached out to the chief regarding this. Um, he had uh, looked around to other communities and their leash laws. Um, so we did um, identify some language that was absent in our leash law that we felt might be beneficial to incorporate. Um, into ours to begin um, for tonight's discussion. And that was um, for uh, proposed new language in Article 3 of the leash law. Uh, so this language including um, no owner of a dog shall, uh, no owner of a dog shall permit the dog to A, disturb the peace and quiet of any neighborhood or endanger the safety of any person by biting, barking, howling, or in any other manner. Um, to be unlicensed or untagged in violation of state law, um, and to run at large unless said dog shall have been vaccinated against rabies during the preceding six months and is in compliance with Article 3, Section 84-5 of the leash law, and to be within the boundaries of, uh, to be within the boundaries of the town cemetery property unless the dog is held firmly on a leash at all times, Furthermore, it shall be the duty of the person who owns, possesses, possesses, or controls a dog to remove and dispose of any feces left by his or her dog on any town cemetery property. Duty to get rid of duty. Exactly. 
So, so this is language that is currently not in our leash law that I uh, brought forward to, to the board for consideration. Um, as well as um, with further review of the leash law, identified some um, conflicting language between the leash law and the public nuisances um, article in our bylaws. Um, and basically what it says in our, um, if I can explain this correctly, under public nuisances, um, it states being a dog which is permitted to run unrestrained at large on property other than that of its owner, the running of hunting dogs or the exercising of dogs which are under the immediate control of their owner or keeper shall not constitute a public nuisance hereunder. Um, so if you go to our actual leash law, um, it does not reference exercising a, a dog or having it be under the immediate control of their owner. So I had proposed incorporating that language into the leash law just so that it coincides with the public nuisances um, uh, bylaw. So that was um, the reason for bringing this before the board tonight. I understand that we did receive some emails um, with other comments um, regarding this. And also, I just want to ask the chief, too, if he had any comments. No, I think the one thing that we need to point out is um, you highlighted it is Pat Keel, a dog under control of a person of, of adequate age and discretion control. Its actions is act as a dog that is on on, um, on a leash. I think that has to be noted. That you, you already highlighted that up, Madam Chair. So I think uh, that and the engaging and exercising is something that both you and I agree upon. Okay. Right. Thank you. Are there any um, comments from the board? I anticipate that there might be um, comments from the public, Nina? I've got a couple comments, so I'll... I do too, yeah. Okay, so, all right, so I'll start with the board. Go ahead, Matthew. Um, so Jim O'Neill sent us an email, which I think was very um, a very good summary of the debate on the Littleton Trails page. Mm -hmm. And, I, and al although I have no problem with um, uh, sort of rationalizing the language in the code, but I don't think that addresses what that debate is about. And I think that debate is about what at heel means. Mm -hmm. And it's further confused by the signage at the entrance to some of the properties. Right. So he, Jim makes a compelling point that at heel means w next to you, not 50 or 100 feet away from you and will return when you ask it to. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's two questions. One is, like, I, I think that the law says that you, the dog needs to be near you. And there's another debate about whether or not we should allow dogs to roam free in public lands, right. which, which, and th those are two separate things. But I think it's pretty clear that the law as it is now does not allow dogs to be roaming free far from their owner. Right, right. And um, thank you for bringing up the <clears throat> sign that, that uh, Mr. O'Neill shared. Right. With us. I don't know where that sign came from. I don't either. Yeah, did you? But it says under verbal control, which is yeah. a confusing term that I think has caused <clears throat> some of the debate to be m aimed at the wrong place. Right. Even immediate control is, is e yeah. ambiguous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at heel is is more specific, and the specific definition language, yeah. in the bylaws says next beside the owner. Like, that. that's pretty clear to me. Okay. Right, Mr. Jacos, did you have any comments? Um, yeah, so it was just the immediate control. It's kind of the same, the same comment that Matthew made, but, uh, and also, um, it, I'm getting in the weeds a little bit, but <coughs> the owner, there's a lot of folks that walk dogs for people, so it's the owner or the, or the person who's responsible for the dog. You know, I mean, it's, it's just how do we word that so that it's inclusive of. Well, the cemetery dog, language says each person who owns, possesses, or controls a dog. That's, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's all we need to say. Yeah. Okay. And is so that. Just, yeah, just to make that more consistent that's exactly where we take that language from okay that's good language mr knox did you have any comments no not really other than to see how times have changed it was once a time we he just went on to town old land and went on the trails with a dog and let a dog go and never had a problem but things have changed since then so i guess we have to abide or have dog owners abide by what we have there and have to clarify what heel actually means okay Mr. Glady? I, I, um, I thought the responses to the situation sound reasonable to me. Um, I'm sure uh, 
be something interesting from citizens who are waiting to speak on a dog issue. You usually get people more excited than, than multi-million dollars <laughs> expenditures. <laughs> I should also clarify, like, I would rather let the dogs run free. Like, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not, I that is my personal, no my personal preference would be I want my dogs to run around and be dogs, but right. um, I don't think that's what the law says. Right. Right. I agree. I mean, personally, I feel there's some trails um, where it makes more sense to have your dog um, under control, you know, by having it on a leash. Whereas other ones, they're, they're just so much more open. It just, to me, it doesn't make sense. And, and more recently, there are so many people on town lands that it's become much more of a problem. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I, you know, I go to Prouty Woods, and it used to be I saw one person every other day, and now it's there's like 10 people every hour. Right. So, and every turn. Yeah. Right. And so I think it's that's why this is coming up more and more. Yeah, I agree. Madam Chair, if I could. Sure. I, I think this is a, a, a larger discussion at a future date in regards to exactly what lands, what trails, uh, off leash, on leash are going to actually be allowed. Um, but I would, I would ask that I be part of that conversation if, if we're going to do that at a future date as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's something we can definitely talk about. I don't know if we want to um, go there tonight, but... A broader discussion. No, probably not idea. tonight. Probably that's discussion. probably a bigger discussion, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. Madam Chair, we do have one hand raised. I'm not sure if the board, if you'd like to take public participation at this point. Actually, now there's three hands raised. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, Joe? I figure on this topic, it's important. Yeah. We have Carolyn Mueller on the line. Hi, uh, Carolyn Mueller, 80 Strawberry Drive. Hi, I, Carolyn. So I had you on in the background, but I heard you mention um, the cemetery. And I think the cemetery rules and regulations, the bylaws, state that there are no dogs allowed in the cemetery. Okay. And um, I'm a cemetery commissioner, and we're actually just revamping them, and we were going to stress again that no dogs except for service dogs were going to be allowed. So I just want to make sure that the, the two bylaws don't conflict. Okay. We have wording about the cemetery. Okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, and next we have Christine Nordhouse. Hi, Christine. Hi, can you hear me? We can. other lands, um, which lands might be available to off-leash dogs and so forth. But yeah, I want, I, I walked Crowdy Woods with my dogs off-leash for 20 years, and now I don't do that anymore. And it's not my favorite thing, but it's the rule. I think that dogs should be leashed for me. And so I just wanted to give that opinion. Okay. Thanks. Give his opinion too. Thank you. Okay, um, Madam Chair, we have Bill Brown. Good evening, Mr. Brown. Hi, this is Bill Brown. Uh, I'm, I've been linked to Oak Hill for the last 10 years. And uh, the, what's posted in the kiosk there, the main kiosk, says, you know, I have a copy of the town bylaws. Uh, and we also have a new select board thing that Amy Green put up. But uh, the sign there says, on a leash or at heel. And I can tell you that lately, 
most dogs I do. I go over there a lot because I monitor the land, you know, cut up trees, pick up the trash. But one thing I don't pick up is there is no poop fairy, you know. Uh, that really annoys me when people bag the poop and then leave it on the trail. I'll pick up a can or a bottle, but I can't carry that in my backpack. But uh, that's getting off the point. But the one thing I will say is that people have, have a misunderstanding of what that heel means. Uh, you know, when a dog runs at me barking and the owner is not in sight, uh, and I have my poles with me, so I can, I, you know, I can fend them off. And then the owner comes in and says, oh, the dog won't hurt you. I said, well, the dog was, you know, looked like he was going to bite me, right? And I said, if, if you went out, I know people who won't take their little kids to a kill because they're afraid that the dog is going to jump on the little kid, all right? But one thing I su I'll suggest, no matter what law, you know, bylaw or law you decide, that the bylaw ought to be sent out to all dog owners when they renew their license. And I suggested that years ago, but it fell on deaf ears. Um, you know, I asked the Conservation Commission to ask the town clerk if when dog owners renew their license each year, they send out the, the uh, bylaw so, and explain what the rules are. I mean, I've had dog walkers over there. A dog, big German Shepherd came at me just about five years ago. And, uh, you know, I thought it was going to try and bite me. You know, I'm holding it off with a stick. And then this, this young woman comes along, and, I, and, and uh, she grabs the dog. And I said, the dog's supposed to be on a leash. She said, well, it's not my dog. I said, what do you mean? So I'm just walking it. It's not my dog. Well, that's all I'll say, okay? But, I mean, this, this has been a big bone of contention of mine for years. That, uh, it, it's, I think it's out of control, okay? I, I, thank you, Mr. Brown. Can you just, could you just state your address, please? Sure, 7 Old Orchard Lane. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. Okay. And, and uh, Madam Chair, we have one more. Um, uh, Rachel? Rachel, if you could just state your name and address, please. Hi, uh, Rachel Rago of 74 Harvard Road. Go ahead. Um, I, yeah, I sent you guys an email a little while ago um, uh, with some suggestions. I thought that the town of Concord handled it pretty well, um, having many of their conservation lands that have sensitive environments or near farmland have required leashes. And then the ones that they've allowed to stay open for, for um, unleashed have a long list of, of you know, a, of code you have to go by, which is, you know, has to remain leashed until you get to a certain point past the parking lot. Only two dogs off leash have to remain within, um, within sight. And the other big thing is that requires people to leash dogs when they pass other hikers. And I thought that those rules, I think it might be a few more, are a great compromise that allows everybody to, to walk peacefully on the trails. I think especially the part where, you know, passing other hikers to, to leash your dogs as you pass others. So I thought that was a great suggestion um, and, and well barked. I think I sent you guys a picture of, of the sign that's, you know, at the start of the trail, um, on one of the trails of October Farm in Concord. And I thought that that would be a great compromise for, for Littleton to, you know, to accommodate everybody. Those, those sound like really good uh, suggestions, Rachel. Thank you. We'll definitely uh, look for that email and look through that. Um, I appreciate you sharing that information. So um, going forward, based on the comments tonight, does the board want to um, maybe circle back and form a group and try to decide on what we want to do if we want to designate certain trails um you know maybe take a closer look at the concord bylaw um i think there's a lot of them out there and I, I, just one thing i'd say is um if we could you know if you could just make note of i know that we kind of keep a running tally of different bylaws and stuff that we want to review mm. and just add the um i mean one of the ideas that uh, mr brown brought up was um great idea when we renew our dog licenses right send out a notice right. say hey these are the bylaws and these are the trails that you can you know what just something um but i would just add these this specific bylaw and maybe that amendment and even you know take a look at rachel's 
email to see if there's some other ideas. And, yeah. Uh, you know, certainly, I think if somebody's going to embrace it and take a look at other, you know, Concord and other communities that have, uh, it seems, have done a better job, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just take a look at those. Yeah. Certainly, play, plagiarisms. Right. <laughs> if it's working for them, right. why, why recreate the wheel, right? Yeah. No, I agree. I think that's a great suggestion. Um, okay, good. It does sound like designating some of them as off-leash with rules is a <clears throat> probably a good compromise. Right, right. Because I think, I mean, I do think like um, Long Lake Park comes to mind. With yeah. it. To me, that seems like more re uh, conducive to having a dog off-leash, yeah. whereas, like I said before, Oak Hill to me just does not, and that's just my personal mm -hmm. opinion. Um, but maybe we can, uh, we can do that. We can uh, get together and... Um, you know, review the other bylaws and, and maybe reach out to a, a couple other organizations and revisit this again. Yep. Does that sound agreeable? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Great. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thanks. Okay, so we are on to scroll up. Um, Okay, so we are on to item 3B, Littleton Landfill Post-Closure Compliance Assistance Fiscal Year 21. Can you lead us off on this, please, Nina? Thank you. Uh, we have uh, the DPW Director, Chris Stoddard, on the line and also our Finance Director, Cheryl Herrick-Stella, to discuss this item. In summary, we're the, we have an agreement that is ready to be signed, subject to the Board's approval and uh, seeking a reserve fund transfer. These were funds that were not um, known before town meeting or costs that were not known. We did know and we did discuss previously that uh, this would be coming before us after town meeting as we, as the, high, uh, the DPW director worked with um, the consultant to develop the proper pricing based on other results and feedback from Mass DEP. So if I may, through you, Madam Chair, refer to Chris Stoddard. Certainly. Uh, yeah, so what you have in front of you is the proposal for um, from Ty and Bond. What this is, is this is a culmination of multiple meetings with Mass DEP, site visits with Mass DEP, um, and a plan that's been presented to Mass DEP um, uh, to do a number of additional ground water, groundwater monitoring well installations and testing throughout the fiscal year. Um, so the total cost is $118,000. Um, this, this, in essence, will, once we start the monitoring plan and move throughout through the year, we will be fully compliant uh, with Mass DEP for um, the landfill. So um, that's basically it. I can answer all the questions anybody has. Great. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Mr. Stoddard? Nope. No. No? Okay, great. Great. Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Okay. So I would recommend a motion. Um, please. Move that the board vote to authorize the town administrator to sign the proposal from Ty and Bond. Consulting Services, Landfill Post Closure Compliance Assistance for fiscal year 2021, subject to the necessary reserve fund transfer by the Finance Committee. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Mr. Glavy? Aye. Mr. Knox? Aye. Mr. DeCoast? Aye. Mr. Nordhaus? Aye. And Cindy Napoli is aye. So the motion is approved as written. And the next item we are on to reopening discussions for town offices, the emergency staffing policy. I, I'll just start off by saying, and then through you, I'd like to refer to our assistant town administrator who's been working very closely with the task force on this. I'd just like to say that um, the town has been working. Um, you know, throughout this pandemic to try to stabilize not only the balances with regard to making sure that, especially in the beginning part of the pandemic, that the town was being diligent and following with 
guidelines that other communities were following and the governor's orders. And um, obviously at that point in time, we closed town hall. We are at the point where we have a lot more information about this pandemic. And we know that the pandemic is more, uh, is, is known to be transmitted through respiratory droplets. We know a lot more facts than we did initially. And there's a lot more information and guidance from the governor and communities are starting to now open. Um, there are very few communities that have been open for a period of time at this point, but uh, we are seeing a number of communities opening and I think that's in large part based on a lot of the guidance and a lot of the um, available infrastructure that's putting us in the position to be able to do that. Uh, through the hard work of task force members, they uh, developed a list that the board saw in terms of what was necessary to get the proper spacing between offices and also develop uh, the necessary protocols in place. Many of our offices here have um, a lot more signs on them. We have room occupancies on them. And for the good or for the bad, we are still, const this is still constantly a fluid situation where we're constantly having to reevaluate and review the information that's been submitted by the state to ensure that we're in compliance. So with that said, um, I am excited to uh, turn it over to our assistant town administrator who's gonna go through the steps that we're taking to um, plan to reopen in August. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nina, and um, hello, uh, uh, board members wish I was there <laughs> present rather than sort of being there um, in, in uh, virtual form. I'm just going to share uh, some information uh, first uh, on uh, where we are. Uh, last week with the fire chief, um, he reviewed each department uh, to make sure that they have what is needed for moving to step uh, phase three, step one. That was done last week, and um, with, with his uh, opinion that we were ready for phase three, step one, uh, we scheduled an all staff meeting for tomorrow at 1.30 to uh, discuss with employees, uh, having all re uh, employees return uh, August 3rd. Uh, there's a lot of discussions within departments as far as what that, um, what that means for some people who have been working uh, part-time, remotely part-time in the office, uh, making sure that we have assurances and also reviewing with department heads uh, if there is any need for accommodations, um, uh, giving employees and department heads that opportunity to work through those. Uh, following August 3rd, then we're basically in a week four transition uh, prior to publicly announcing um, opening to the public uh, effective August 17th. That would give us an opportunity to review with the uh, Board of Selectmen at the next meeting exactly where we are, what a uh, public informational campaign would look like from social media, from material that we'd be uh, putting out there on the website, uh, uh, signage that would be around town uh, building, so that we can make sure that people are, are aware of what is gonna be asked of the public when they come uh, to town hall the 17th. Um, and that would effectively represent our uh, change to uh, phase three, step step two. Um, so basically just sort of looking at the calendar of, uh, of August, um, employees come back on the third, uh, allow for transition periods so that people can get used to not only the protections in place, but also some of the practices that we're asking employees to do. This includes um, wearing masks when you step out of your office space, uh, being aware of, of common areas, um, making sure that things are wiped down. So then we can start uh, with a board, uh, select board meeting on the 10th with a formal announcement so we can then prepare for advertisement and getting information out to the public. And then opening to the public on the 17th with an evaluation period, basically just making sure that things are working well. Um, you know, we, uh, with the three floors here at Town Hall, what exactly is happening on the first or second floor? We don't have direct observation up here. So we're going to be relying on a communication with um, our staff to make sure that if 
there are things that are concerned that we're able to hear about it and address it and make sure that things are working properly. Um, so as you all know, um, we do have uh, many employees that identify as high risk or have concerns with family. Um, many of those people are actually back here uh, working. Um, we've made uh, accommodations with the uh, Director of Regional uh, Board of Health as well as the Fire Chief to make sure that we are uh, addressing their uh, concerns. Um, and we want people to feel comfortable with the practices and, and procedures we put in place. Um, you know, not only do we want to provide people with that information, but this is going to be a con continually evaluated um, and we'll be making adjustments. And just like the, you know, the governor has stated, depending on trends, we may need to revert back to earlier phases, but it's going to be something that's going to be a uh, continual uh, 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 evaluation and checking in with staff to make sure that things are, are working well. Um, so uh, that basically is where we are. We do have uh, some documents that will be going out through a uh, system we have uh, currently in town hall uh, for employees to review and sign off that they have reviewed them. We want to make sure that uh, employees um, are aware of what happens if there is a concern about exposure, uh, how lines of communication should, should occur, uh, and um, also just recommendations as far as how uh, the, the work environment now is with this uh, new reality we are uh, living in. Um, we have links to uh, <coughs> websites and videos that we're asking people to take a look at. And did I freeze? You did not. You did not. I. Oh. Did I freeze? Nope. Nope. Okay, froze on my end, so um, uh, nothing like awkward Zoom silences uh, during meetings. Um, so that's basically where we where we are. Um, uh, and, and again, it really with uh, the assistance of uh, the task force with uh, with Carol and Ann and HR, the fire chief, uh, with Jim with the board of health. Um, there's been a lot of uh, discussions and also a lot of discussions with staff um, because they do have a lot of questions um, on how things will work. So as far as uh, um, uh, motion, don't really see one for today, except for, um, let me just put it back up, uh, you know, considering making a formal motion for at August 10th meeting to reopen uh, Shattuck Street and discuss any policy language if it's uh, if it's needed. But the oh, it is the tenth. So if anyone has any any questions, be glad to try right. to answer them. Thank you. Uh, very much for that summary and thank you to everyone who's worked on uh, the reopening plan for Town Hall. It's certainly a um, daunting task and I know um, <laughs> the board has been, um, you know, the board's received a lot of feedback from the public um, who has shared some frustration just because of um, not being able to access Town Hall and um, you know, so we do appreciate that it's a lengthy process. I'm glad to see it's moving forward with some affirmative dates um, to get um, the, the town employees reacclimated with town hall under these new conditions and also looking um, to a definitive opening date for town hall. So I don't know if any board members have any comments or questions. Trying to find out just by going online, but uh, here is I assume that Joe or whoever's heading up this effort is aware of where we are in comparison to our bordering towns and their, uh, their town halls are open Acton, Boxborough, Harvard, Air Broughton, Westford. I do have some information, but I don't have it in front of me. I'd be glad to circulate it after today's meeting. Well, I mean, I know some. I know some. Some of the communities are open, but I, you know, I've gotten a list, a longer list of just the than just the communities adjacent to us. So, you know, I could easily compile the ones that are a bit open at this point. But I did 
send out a request through a forum that um, was established for discussions about the pandemic and I there was a spreadsheet that was created some time ago and I asked communities to fill in the spreadsheet looking for that very information um, so I'm happy to share that well, that's fine but I just guess from anecdotally from your interactions with your peers which I assume happen on a daily basis you must be aware whether or not they're open. I, we sir I, I don't speak with the communities adjacent to us on a daily basis but uh, from time to time absolutely I know that some communities adjacent to us are open and then I know some are not okay so you're looking for a motion from us tonight Joe or are you waiting till um, our meeting on the 10th uh, the next meeting I think is when it would be appropriate for okay. a motion as far as especially opening up for, uh, for the public and if there is any uh, policies along with that that we need to adopt or amend. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board on the reopening? No, no? just we're, we're hearing it from developers. We're hearing it from the public that, especially developers that do work on the towns, that they're, they're able to. Frustrating on my own, having to come here to drop off papers that. You know, I had to fill out, and no longer is there a thing you can drop them in. There's a little slot this big for a packet this big. You can't put it in there, so mm -hmm. you have to call somebody on the phone to come down and greet you at the door. Meanwhile, there's people working overtime at home somewhere. You know, I get that. So, uh, yeah, and then you hear people across the town they're just finding it very frustrating that they can't connect with services that they need to in offices, uh, regulatory board offices especially. Um, they need to get access to information, and they're getting it in other towns, and that's what I, when I'm confronted with that, I don't have an adequate answer as to why we're not, um, why we're not on a par with some of our neighbors. Okay. For Madam Chair, through you, if I may, sure. uh, just say that if anyone experiences any difficulty, please bring it to our office's attention. This is me speaking to the public, obviously. Um, if anyone experiences any difficulty as we make this transition, we are more than glad to participate and ensure that individuals get the service and information that they're looking for. So please, um, if you're having any difficulty reaching any office um, across the town departments, um, especially those here in town hall while we're closed please don't hesitate to call our office and um, we'd be glad to make sure that that connection occurs okay great thank you and I will look into that mail slot issue as well thank you for mentioning great. That. thank you okay so we are on to item number four which would be uh, public input and members updates so we will begin with public input Do have one hand raised? You could begin by stating your name and address, please. Hi, uh, this is Christine Nordhouse Starhill. Um, I am just wondering if you are taking public input now for item agenda item eight, the select board stipends or if you will be willing to take that input during discussion of the agenda item itself. Yeah, usually we'll take public input during the discussion of the agenda item itself as opposed to public input. Perfect, so I just wanted to make sure because it, it's been a little funky. Um, so great, I will lower my hand and make my comments then, thank you. Sure. Let's see, any other public input? Uh, I guess, Madam Chair, we have Anita Harding. You could just state your name and address, please. Anita Harding on 19 Russell Street, member of the Council on Aging. I'm wondering if this information that was given up tonight has anything to do with the COA offices. Will we open on the 17th as well? be glad to speak to that sure. um, as far as the actual offices are concerned where the employees are that that would be the plan unless there are um, specific circumstances that would require a specific employee to 
continue, but we are going to be taking those up in a different way. Um, but as far as access to employees in the Elder and Human Services Department, the answer would be yes, that would affect them. But it would not include gatherings of the um, Council on Aging, and unfortunately that is one that is obviously, and I, I know you probably know this, Anita, firsthand, but um, that is one that's considered the most high-risk population, and it's part of Phase 4 for the Governor, and it is not one that would resume until some date in the future to be determined. But certainly access to employees in the Elder and Human Services Department would be available at that point in person. Um, we're certainly available by appointment at this point outdoors as well as uh, we'll transition to indoor appointments at some point in between that phasing as well. Okay. And I would like to say that that has worked very well um, in, you know, helping the people that work who we've been able to help. What does it have to do with the thrift shop in the kitchen? What's going, will that be open on the 17th or not? So the kitchen, it would be a congregation. Uh, I'll, I'll address that first since that's technically a town, um, a direct town function, not to suggest that the thrift shop isn't uh, a very important piece. It's just one that's it's, it's managed and participated by the friends. As far as the congregate meals are concerned, I don't think that there's really a material change to uh, the process that we have today, but we're certainly glad to reevaluate that. A lot of the difficulty becomes the size of the area and continuing bringing in actual senior programs we would need to check to see if we could even do such a thing while we're not in phase four of the governor's reopening plan so i don't believe that that would be permitted at this point as far as the thrift shop is concerned um, we can certainly have those discussions i don't know if the board has any input on what the board would like to see there but uh, we can certainly revisit that at another meeting as well with respect to the thrift shop well I just look at the practices that are going on with other retail clothing stores and I don't know that the thrift shop could adhere to the governor's um, requirements for um, managing a clothing uh, it's basically a clothing store um, I, I don't know that they could you need to sterilize the clothes um, yeah the, the way that it needs to be managed and handled and it's such a small confined space I just I just don't know at this time um, if they could adhere to the governor's guidelines we'd have to really look into that further right. yeah All right absolutely I mean to your point I, I haven't done a lot of reading on what the retail guidelines are because right it's not I only know prime. from shopping so <laughs> that's good <laughs> I have someone had an answer that's helpful so okay thank you so much for answering my questions I appreciate it thanks Anita is there anyone else I don't see any other hands raised okay okay so we will go on to member updates I'll start with you mr. Nordhouse please. Uh, nothing for me today mr. DeCost I uh, just wanted to say that uh, this Friday will be the Littleton High School class of 2020 graduation on alumni field and I want to wish all graduates whether they be you know, any, any Littleton graduates high school or college <laughs> Um, congratulations, uh, good luck, and um, best wishes from the board. Thank you. Mr. Knox? Nothing at this time. Mr. Glavy? Nothing. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to um, thank the board. We had a, a very, what I thought was a productive goals meeting last week, um, and I just wanted to um, maybe speak with you about rescheduling our next meeting. I don't know if we, you want to do it at a regularly scheduled meeting or a standalone meeting um, or adding an extra meeting to our agenda but I'd like to move forward with um, you know bringing the goals back and taking another look at them and, and voting to to finalize them and approve them so I don't know if the board our next meetings on August 10th we could we could schedule it at that time or if you want to maybe t um, schedule it for another another meeting add another meeting to our agenda schedule I'll, I'll just offer that um, it typically yeah, it's almost like doing three readings you know, at, the, at the House and right. Senate. But um, depending upon what our agenda looks like, it might not be a bad idea to kind of get the, the first reading done and kind of say these are the things we discussed. 
to put the you know, kind of the big rocks out there and say right. these are the things we, we, we kind of all agreed on and um, then we can start setting priorities and, and fine tuning them as specific goals and setting objectives and who the champions are and that kind of thing. Right. So if, if the amount of agenda items warrants on at our next meeting on the 10th, um, I'd say it might be worthwhile. Um, Set aside an hour or so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just have that discussion. To start the conversation so that you know then the public knows what we're what we're discussing right. and what we're looking at. And right. We can uh, probably get some input from them and help us to fine tune. Right. right. I think it's important. That it's in public and here in this room on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, so whether it's at the on the tenth or we add another one, I'm I'm indifferent to that. But I do agree that. I don't want to be here till till midnight. So let's look at the yeah. uh, let's look at the load on the okay. tenth and then decide. Right. <clears throat> that sounds great. Okay. Same page. Thank you. Okay, we are on to item number eight: the purchase of town on land, Man Manchester Drive parcels uh, U14. We had received a um, comprehensive um, proposal from um, the abutter to. Uh, the parcel U14 on Manchester Drive. I don't know if they're on uh, the call or not. I know that um, Mr. Venuti had provided some um, feedback on that proposal as well. Yes, Mr. McGuire is on the line and um, is listening in. Happy to bring him in if the board would like. Um, I know that uh, we have this and a couple of other, or at least one other parcel that I was notified of today with regard to interest in purchasing land. Um, the town has a policy for the process of doing a, essentially a surplus of land. It is a little bit different than the, uh, there's two different po there's two different specific policies that down, the town has. There's one that's for the sale of a butter lots and then there's one for the sale of a lots that are larger than the definition for a butter lots. And this, the three parcels in question here, two of which are on the agenda and one is not, um, are all outside the scope of the Abutter Lots program. And that is largely some of the guidance that our town treasurer has given here with regard to the size of the lots. Okay. I did take note of that um, as well when we saw the, the first proposal come through. Um, regarding the size of the lots uh what dictates a lot being too too large what's 4800 square feet it says in the memo is the largest size that an abutter a butter lot can qualify for which is tiny hmm. but it was it was imposed to avoid mcmansions and you know well, that makes there. complete sense yeah right. but it's just a very small it's like if you want to add a little odd piece to your property, right? Right. Or yeah, you yeah. can't do an addition because of a setback. I you see. acquire an abutting, an abutting <clears throat> property, and now you have that. that uh, um, right. So I, I spoke to um, one of the members of CONSCOM, and I believe that they're actually meeting tonight to discuss these parcels. <clears throat> and I, I would prefer not to go forward before we hear from them on this parcel or, or really any other parcel that's adjacent, certainly adjacent to conservation land. I don't have any inherent... Um, objection to selling the lots, but I do want to hear from the other boards um, to see what they say about it. Right. Well, I think what Mr. Venuti is saying, though, is that the size mm -hmm. of the lots are too large to consider through the abutters program, mm -hmm. um, and that we would have to utilize the other um, the uh, the land sale committee, right? That's right. And, and uh, convene them to, right. to review the request. And we do have another request. What is the size of that parcel? Um, I don't have the size off the top of my head, but I can pull it up as we speak. Probably. Um, the the land sale committee does provide for when it was created. It does provide for a representative of the conservation commission. So. It would allow for the Conservation Commission, presumably, to meet, discuss, and provide input on that subject matter. Um, <clears throat> the other lot is 66. Actually, it's. No, it doesn't look like I have that readily what, accessible. What is the lot number? Do you have a lot number? Yeah, I do. Um, 
14 11. Do you have the GIS open? Where is that one? It's on Shaker Lane. Okay. So the que I mean, the question becomes: Does the board want to f um, utilize? Is the board comfortable with the policy that exists in place today, or does the board want to? look at a different structure um, you know if the board wanted to get feedback from all committees that apply then presumably those are already taken into consideration with the land use committee but if there are boards or committees that it doesn't contemplate and doesn't take into consideration then perhaps we look at a modification to the process First, I, I just, is it Mr. McGuire, is that the person? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just want to thank him and I appreciate the work and time he's put into doing the research on this piece of property. You yeah. don't know how many times during my tenure that you'll have next to a neighbor say, I want to buy that parcel and draw a, a circle around it and, <laughs> right. and, and say, I want it. The research is done there that goes all the way back to Mr. Smadbuck. And I was pretty nice. impressed. I think we probably enjoyed reading the old, uh, the old deeds that were there. So I want to appreciate his desire to get it and it's all overgrown land and from his viewpoint i can see why he'd want to clear it out and 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 make it part of his land so but i don't want to go away from things that we already have set up i want to do it in the proper manner as far as i'm concerned right. and i would would want to hear from conservation i would just hope that i wish the conservation had gone forward ahead of time and said you know something we own these parcels when do we ask the town for it ahead of time that's I've got some, but just, just um, this is very close to where we just did um, our most recent um, tax title property sale. Uh, it was at town meeting last May, I think. Um, so right on Manchester and Newtown, mm -hmm. we had the the the, um, the corridor that went back to the app land, mm -hmm. and um, you know neighbors talk. So they probably, hopefully, they you know they talked to each other and said you know, there might be an opportunity for you to buy that land with the poison ivy and the and the you know the bittersweet or whatever is, was growing on it. Certainly, I do agree that we should should get the input of um, the conscom. I'd actually go a little bit further and say, planning board, zoning board, we might, might want to get some input input from them as well because if in fact you, you, know, you have these three contiguous lots, lots 104, 102, and 101, that as those expand it's going to go against some of the reasons why we put the 4800 square feet in place and we put some of the, the restrictions on that we did just to make sure that it's you know it's never um, able to be deeded separately it's never I mean I know a lot of that is all taken care of and Steve has, has that all kind of written in there but even to the extent that if they wanted to put an addition on that it's we, there's some limitations and you know maybe they have to use the existing setbacks or you know they can't get a variance beyond a certain percentage of the of the lot size or something like that um, but I think it's great that, you know, to your point, Joe, that the, the amount of work and effort that uh, the requires put into this, and um, it made it a lot easier for us to do the research and, and um, kind of move yes. forward. Yeah. D does the land sale committee include a member of FinCom and or the zoning or planning board? It's a big committee. Planning, yes. Okay. Off the top of my memory, and I can get you to the answer to because that because the other thing in in Steve's minute memo was about the um, FinCom asking for the assessed value. Right. So we would want to hear from FinCom on that as well. Yeah. And I, I do I, I would advocate like go through the process. Sounds like it's been put in place for a reason. And right. Why would we? Why would we do something different? I, I haven't heard a good reason yet. Right. No, the committee consists of town administrator or assistant town administrator, the building commissioner, planning board representative, town assessor, town treasurer, and a representative of the conservation commission, the park commission, the highway department, and the light and water department. Wow. Okay. So you said Mr. McGuire is on the call? He is. Okay, so we'll give him a chance to speak. Certainly. Good evening, Brendan. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing well, thank you. And thank you for, uh, for your consideration here. Certainly. So the um, the only thing that I would add to this um, discussion, I think all the points so far have been valid, especially those pertaining to a body of conservation land. I think it's 
especially important that we, that we loop them into any conversation we have because um, you know this conservation land that's behind us is is, is crucial to, to what makes this area so special so um, you know definitely definitely want to make sure that they're in the loop and have their say in whatever ends up happening here one way or another but the only other um, comment that I'd like to add to, to Mr. Benuti's um, memo that he had shared was that the, the lot that's adjacent to my property is assessed currently at $160,000. And I believe that was a throwback to what it was originally assessed as a buildable lot. Now being a quarter of an acre, it, it doesn't meet the current conditions for a buildable lot. Um, so I, I think any discussions that we have with I think it would be prudent for us to at least um, consider having the lot reassessed or, or just looking at that to, to figure out why that number is what it is. Thank you. It, it actually, it may be grandfathered um, <clears throat> as a buildable lot, but that's certainly something that we can look into just because of its location. A lot of lot, uh, lots in that area of town are grandfathered. Um, I, I'm not aware of that. I think it's just yeah. Like it's lot, a buildable lot. Lot one hundred two might be grandfather. Yeah, because of its size. Oh, well, if it has the size. Yeah, because yeah. of its only because of its size, because it's a hundred by hundred lot. Yeah. Because the problem we've run into historically is trying to avoid the person who's trying to patch lots together to create a buildable. Right. Like yeah. <laughs> no, just because of the the size in itself, it's a hundred by hundred, so it could be grandfathered. But we'll definitely look into that, Brandon. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Sure. Okay, so how would the board um, like to proceed? Do we want to move forward with the land sale committee for this consideration and as well as the other um, application? I don't know if that was actually an application, Ian, or if it was just an email that we received about the other parcel. I would probably have more information when I spoke with the resident who's interested in the parcel, which is uh, scheduled for this Wednesday afternoon. But I believe that they are specifically interested in purchasing the parcel um, U14-11, uh, if it was. Which is 7,840 square feet. Okay. I, um, just as soon get the input of the Conservation Commission and whoever else it was we were going to get first. Be, I don't know if we need to convene the committee if we decide for some other reason in advance of that. I mean, I don't mind going in that direction, but if it's, you know, if it's off the table for other right. reasons, well, then no need to get 10 people involved if one outfit makes the case. Right. Uh, well, it might be, whatever. A, right. If we, yeah, if we're limited to this, the amount that we can um, uh, offer through the abutters program, this, the size of the lot, which it looks like we have, um, issues with both lots coming before us right now right. as far as this, the size of that so but I'm, I mean I'm fine with you know waiting to see what the Conservation Commission says and maybe after your conference on Wednesday Nina you can um, share that um, information with the board sure. and them as well and we'll go from there sure so we'll bring this back on the 10th yeah. to discuss absolutely Okay. But all just to if Mr. McGuire is still on the line, all of his points relative to you know getting getting the property back on the tax rolls, cleaning it up, oh, yeah. making it you know get a usable space, and you know right. certainly for the benefit of his family, and yeah, there's, there's all, all good reasons for us to do it. We just want to make sure we do it properly. Yeah, exactly. Don't set any precedents or step outside of bounds. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Just too bad that poison ivy is native and not invasive. <laughs> Okay, so Got now we are on to item number six, special town meeting, review the date options and adopt a timeline, call the special town meeting, um, open the warrant and discuss article topics proposed by the select board. Thank you, Madam Chair. I see Diane Quarry is also on the line, so if the board wishes to refer to her for any questions. Um, we have basically two proposals before the board for dates for town meeting. There's not one specific date that um, is preferred by all departments. Uh, for the good or for the bad, we have a scenario which the town clerk prefers the first date that's proposed, which is Saturday, October 17th, and the light and water department prefers the following Saturday, which is October 24th, and they each have their respective reasons and certainly would defer to the town clerk for hers if she'd like to speak on it. 
I can tell you that the light and water department is, they were looking at it strictly from the standpoint of the more time that they have to plan for the sewer project and proposal, the more time that they'll have for informational meetings. And Madam Chair, through you, if I could defer to the town clerk Absolutely. in case she'd like to speak to. Sure. I have, to, I have to imagine this is that this is slamming right into her early voting, oh, yeah. and yep. I mean, if, if if we do it on October twenty fourth, we're right up against that last mm -hmm. weekend of early voting and, and the election. Well, it's going to be a long ten be, days for her office. It's going to be impossible for her, mm -hmm. frankly. Right. If I mean, the later we go, the, the more difficult it will be for, and for the colder, her. her and office. the colder it gets. Right. 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 That's the other balance, right? <clears throat> Which Diana, is why we stopped, is she said the seventeenth. Yeah. Diane, can you? Yep. Hi. Yep. Hi, Diane. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Hi. So, um, basically, as you said, the main reason that we're looking to do it on the 17th is really because of the early voting. Um, there's a lot of issues that we're going to be having, obviously. With, um, with the requirement of having the early voting on the Saturday and Sunday, both weekends. Um, we're looking at a lot of issues with volunteers, and uh, <coughs> volunteers is gonna, is gonna be one of our major issues. Is, so no matter what time we have it, um, it's gonna be a long day for our volunteers having town meeting and then having um, the elections. It's gonna be an all day item for us. So um, we're looking and hoping that you will look to the 17th um, based on um, the first weekend, knowing that we're not going to be in the middle of all that early voting. Um, and the reason I'm saying in the middle of the early voting is to start off the early voting and having the early voting and the um, elections will be, I think, a little bit easier for us to have volunteers then if we're in the middle of early voting when we're having that first weekend a whole week of voting and then another weekend of voting <clears throat> so um I'm, I'm looking to you to kind of look to that first weekend for an election as well as the timeline that we're looking to have the election and i'm sorry the, the town meeting i know that you were looking to have it at 11 o'clock in the morning but we are required by the state to have four hours of early voting. So if you're looking at 11 o'clock in the morning, um, and we go, so scenario, perhaps, say two hours at a town meeting, that brings us to one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and on a good day, an hour breakdown, so that brings us to two o'clock in the afternoon. Now I have to go back with all the uh, shields, all the tables to set up for my election. I have to be set up one hour ahead of my election. Yeah. Now we're talking <clears throat> um, two o'clock to three o'clock to be set up. Now I can't um, be opening my election until four o'clock. So now I have to be open from 4 o'clock until 8 o'clock at night. Diane, just for clarification, Madam Chair, if I may. Sure. Um, I think that the discussion we had at our uh, internal meeting on the subject was we agreed to 9 a.m., so I've proposed okay. everything with 9 a.m. Okay. So that, I wasn't sure if they, you know, if, if that had been brought forward to them or not. So, um, so I'm hoping that we can go with 9 o'clock. So that gives me a little bit more of <laughs> a leeway. Yep. Um, so that's what we're hoping to do is 9 o'clock. So it gives me a little bit more time um, because as well, you know, um, for LCTV to be able to set up for that day, it gives them a little more time in the morning. So um, it's, it's going to be a long day no matter what we do. Um, and so I'm just breaking your indulgence and, and asking you to start at 9. And then we, we have a little bit more, more time for the day. And, um, and we're asking for the 17th. Okay. I understand um, Lake Water's Lake Water Department and what they're looking at, but it also if we have a rain date, um, I have to still look. I have to literally have my information published. So if you're going to change the date, 
I still have to keep my um, time that I do my election. I can't change my election time. So I literally have to put my time out there. So I have to set my date and my time. So I'm looking to keep my election date for the following weekend. So if we have to have a rain date, I still have to put my time out there. So I'm going to be putting that time at the same time as if we were gonna be having the election the following weekend, if it is a rain date. So I'm gonna have it at the same time with both weekends. The afternoons, yeah. But regardless of, regardless of when you have the top meeting. Okay. Because heaven forbid that we have a rain date. But right. It'll still be that. Yeah. Um, thank you, Diane. Thank you for your input. I mean, certainly we want to um, accommodate you. Um, we know all the hard work and really pressure that goes um, along wow. with holding wow. the elections. Um, yeah. As far as, you know, I know Littleton Light and Water uh, is working against a deadline, too, with respect to the sewer project, and I, I can appreciate that, but I don't know what the, um, you know, the consensus of the, or input from the board is, but I think in this situation, we really need to defer to the town clerk um, with respect to the date. Um, it's, it's seven days. You know, I hope that um, Light and Water can, can make it work. Um, but I really just see, see them having more flexibility in this type of situation as opposed to what uh, the town clerk is up against. I agree. I agree. You know, the, in the order of priorities, the, the clerk's concerns uh, outweigh everyone else's. As much as I want everything to go right for the sewer, I believe the concern there was they wouldn't have enough time to properly inform the public, and I think that's something we just have to consciously work on earlier. Right. Uh, it's coming from a good place, you know, wanting to, to make sure that everybody's informed, but, right. uh, I, you know, that this is important, too. Mm -hmm. It is. I'm sympathetic to electric light and water, but looking at the logistics of the last town meeting, I, I really feel for Diane, and I want to make it as easy on her as possible. Right. So I agree. I think it should be the 17th, and it should be at 9. Okay. Any other comments? No, I agree. And we, uh, they don't even know what's going to happen with the school. So, I mean, it's, we have hybrid conversations and everything else. But um, has anybody reached out to the schools? Just, yes, okay, great. Yeah, just, just they to make did sure indicate that, that they could make both weekends work. There's a little bit less flexibility on the first weekend, but <clears throat> we know that we can make it work within the footprint. Okay. Um, the only other piece of consideration since we're leaning and we're probably on October 17th is would the board um, like to discuss closing the warrant earlier than in the past because now we are moved up a week in terms of the um, historical date for town meeting and so using the calendar that we've used in the past comparing that to this it puts us in a difficult uh, situation for closing the warrant on September 10th and in order to get the board one more meeting opportunity to have discussions, I'm proposing August 19th as a starting point for discussion. We could certainly discuss building in additional meetings and try to bump that date out too. I think we all have to step up if, if, if need be. Just I'd say leave the calendar as, as tight as you can and just all of us kind of, if we have to squeeze another meeting in, we have to squeeze another meeting in. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's everybody's going to have to do some additional lifting. Light and Water's going to have to do some additional lifting and try to get meetings and educating the public more. Um, obviously, Diane's got to be pretty flexible, and um, <coughs> that's, how we, that's how we try to leave so, it. Sorry. So we have a meeting on the 10th, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And so we could, if we wanted, if we needed another one, we could call one on the 17th just prior to that warrant closing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so the warrant closing date uh, is typically in the middle of September. And so the typical date for this calendar would be if it was an October 26th town meeting or thereabouts, then it would have been typically uh, September 10th. In order to, we could add in a September, um, we could either add in the date that you mentioned, which would be the 17th, 17th of August, or we could add in the September 8th, which is a Tuesday after Labor Day. There's two options, but I, you know, in many ways we had three meetings scheduled for September and we probably still need those. Those are all accounted for on either of these timelines. 
but that would put us in a if, if we didn't take the august 17th option then we'd want to put in an, a september 8th option and that would mean meetings every week for the month of mm -hmm. september okay any what are the what's the board's uh thoughts on that it is what it is that's my thought you know it's, it's it is what it is we're not you know it's so uh, add, kind of up against september it. As I mean, as needed. I mean, we, we're in all likelihood we're going to need to add at least one, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't personally. I don't have a problem with that. Like you said, we'll do what we need to do to get it, to get it done. Um, Joe or Paul, do you have any comments? No, I think we obviously have to put the additional meetings in there to get get it done. So. Right. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to leave it as is, and then we'll add an additional meeting in September if need be. Leave it as is on the nineteenth. The warrant closing on the nineteenth or on the tenth. On the I September think, 10th. I think that's my understanding of the discussion was the 10th, but let's confirm. I, I would, I think that there is a benefit to keeping the warrant open for, I mean, August 19th is right around the corner and that's the difficulty. Um, so if we are able to schedule additional meetings as needed, okay. I would, I would recommend leaving it open till September okay. 10th. Let's right. do that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Okay, so there is a motion. Let me do it, Paul. Oh, yeah. Move the vote. Move, you got it? Um, you, I've already moved on to the next one. So you got it right in front <laughs> of you. Move the board vote pursuant to Master Law, Chapter 39, Section 10, to call a special town meeting for Saturday, October 17th, 2020, at 9 a.m. at Alumni Field, Littleton Middle School, 55 Russell Street, with a rain date of Sunday, October 18th. 18th thank you 2020 at 9 a.m. also with the warrant therefore to open forthwith and close on Thursday September 9th 10th. 10th thank you 2020 at noon and to adopt the applicable presented town meeting timeline second motion has been made and seconded any further discussion all those in favor mr. Glavy Aye. mr. Knox Aye. mr. DeCoast Aye. mr. Nordhaus yes and Cindy Napoli is aye. So the motion is approved as dictated and updated. Thank Jennifer. you all. You're Thank welcome, you, Diane. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on that auto, um, agenda item, Nina? No. Okay. Um, so Unless the board wanted to discuss um, specific, specific articles. articles. Yeah. Um, I do have a list of preliminary article warrant article submissions um, I, considering we discussed the leash law today I don't know if that's something that we want to add to that preliminary list or if there are other items that the board would like to add I think there might be I'd like to hold <clears throat> that open for now because I think there might be a few other ones that we're going to possibly add mm -hmm. um, as we as we go through the process so just to that line yeah. Uh, so do you want me to run down the our items that we do sure. have at this point? So simply the typical bills of prior years, the any FY 2021 budget amendments, which we, we don't know at this point if we will have or won't have. Supplemental FY 21 capital items, again, we don't know at this point. The purchase of the Tehadawan land that has been um, a tremendous amount of effort has gone into and um, CPC authorization as needed. Lease purchase of ambulance, that's something that I believe the board will hear about at one of its next meetings, the August 10th meeting, if mm -hmm. I recall correctly. Um, Littleton Common Smart Sewer Design is discussed. Littleton Station Zoning Change, if ready. Um, uh, zoning Bylaw Amendments for 5G, and I do anticipate also some street acceptances as well. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so now we're on to item number seven, collective bargaining agreements. So do you want to lead off on this, Mr. DeCoast? Want to? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have um, each of the unions, well, we have police, fire, highway, and dispatch. Dispatch are um, Due to, re, due to get, well, they have to be negotiated and they're due to expire uh, June 30th, 2020, <coughs> 2021, excuse me. And um, in order to move forward, we would need to establish a, a subcommittee. And I think that um, it, it's probably a prudent idea for just two of us to, rather than having a couple of us 
negotiate with police, a couple of negotiate with fire and so forth and so on, have the same two go through the negotiation process um, for each of the, the four unions. And um, I think Matthew and I are going to uh, step up and be the, the lucky parties. Excellent. So. Thank you very much for volunteering. I appreciate volunteering. it. It's voluntold. It's voluntold. <laughs> <laughs> However you want to, yep. however you want to take it. Um, okay. Any other uh, questions or comments from the board? I just think it's Not a great, a, great idea. They, they stepped up. Yeah. No. <laughs> Excellent. So I believe that we do have a All motion. Right. All right. Then uh, I would move that the board vote to establish a subcommittee of member Jessica Koch and member Matthew Woodhouse. To conduct the negotiations with the, are we just going with police at this point? Or no, all? we're going to go with them all. Yeah, okay. Yeah. With the police Thank dispatch fire or highway <laughs> union, Un uh, and uh, highway unions. Excellent. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any are further? You, any further discussion? All those in favor, Mr. Nordhaus. Yes. Mr. DeCoast. Yes. Mr. Knox? Yes. Mr. Glavy? Uh, yes. And Cindy Napoli is yes. Joe is Thank you again way too for, happy right now. <laughs> thank you very much. And so now we are on to item number eight, select board stipends, vote the rule of necessity. So Nina, maybe you could um, lead us into this. Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, considering, it, and I don't know the history, but to considering the um, the reintroduction of stipends into the budget, which town meeting approved, uh, I would recommend that the board vote the rule of necessity, which is outlined by the Ethics Commission. Specifically, there's the following that's stated, an elected member of a city or town board is ordinarily disqualified by the conflict of interest law from participating in a matter before the board that involves his or her own financial interest. Under very limited circumstances, an elected board member may be able to use the rule of necessity to permit the participation of the otherwise disqualified members in order to allow the board to act. In this case, where the board would need to sign a payroll warrant, paying essentially itself, it is recommended that the board vo vote the rule of necessity to dispel um, concerns of any conflict of interest. Okay. Thank you. Are there any um, questions or comments from the board? Uh, just in, in reviewing the actual ethics uh, committee advisory 505, it does state the rule of necessity should be used only upon advice from town or city council or the state ethics commission because improper use of the rule may result in a violation of the conflict of interest law. The advice should be obtained in writing if feasible. So I'm assuming you talked to town council about this? Well, I made it evident to um, the board that that was the language, and I checked to see if we wanted to check with council, but that wasn't. Well, if you found that language, you should have found this language. I, it's I did, right and I included that in my email to the board. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I'm happy to push this off if the board would like to push it off. I'm just wondering whether or not you talked to council about it. You didn't. As I correspond, in corresponding with select uh, chairwoman Napoli, I indicated that this was the rule of necessity identified and recommended that we speak with yeah. town council. I was asked to put it on the agenda, and okay. I did so. If we were just committing a redundancy, I wouldn't mind, but now that I'm a little concerned that we were getting a you know, partial uh, reading of the actual advisory, I'm not sure. I mean, I, uh, I know we, for many years, uh, routinely did it. I mean, the stipends were a part of the town budget from the 1800s to about 10 years ago, and uh, I don't ever recall there being a, of a rule of vote of necessity. Um, as I say, I don't mind adding it if it's, it has no harm, but when I see the caution from the Ethics Commission that you shouldn't use this unless you have advice of counsel. Right. And, uh, and to, to, to further uh, Paul's point, uh, Master General Law Chapter 268A states in, in the conflict of interest section uh, that it's designed to prevent self-dealing, and by bringing it to town meeting and having town meeting vote, we we it wasn't that we voted it in ourselves. Yeah, it was. Um, right. it in, was in this section, also cites a number of examples, and one they give the closest I could find was a water commission board who was setting in setting. Uh, water rates were effectively setting their own water rates, and it was the determined, you know, their, their advice there was it's not necessary. Uh, so um, I wouldn't want to rely on my legal counsel or 
or someone else's legal counsel, but I wouldn't mind relying on our legal counsel. Right. Be happy to check yeah. the town counsel. Yeah. yeah. The, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Based on Chair that. Chair, mind talking to? Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. Based on that additional language, um, I, I think we should, it's advising yeah. us to seek legal counsel. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. It, pointedly, the advice should be obtained in writing if feasible. I mean, I'm not making a light point of it. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you for um, looking into that. Um, any other comments? Yeah, just talk to him. We can put it off for the meeting. Okay. But it, I mean, the, the expectation was that it was voted on, um, and it was voted that it was a, the stipend would be paid on July 1st, 2020. Um, and the stipends, with the exception of uh, one stipend that I'm aware of, they're paid on July 1st mm -hmm. of, of the fiscal year. And the fact that that didn't take place, and I'm not sure why it didn't, but. Um, I have no doubt that the town meeting vote was sufficient, but since this that, issue was mm -hmm. raised, I would rather have the legal counsel yeah, tell I, us that. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But I, I think that, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I it's just because we have, it needs to be processed through signing the warrant. It always yeah. was. Right. In, in every other community that, that has the stipend in place, in the, in the, well, not every other community. I won't say every other you know, community, but in the communities that I've checked with, they're, they're not aware of any rule of necessity. Oh, okay. Maybe it happened in, in by, by previous boards, but. Right, okay. I, I, you guys know how I feel about the stipends. I <laughs> renew my objection to them. I think it's wrong to take money when employees are being furloughed, and, but that has little to do with our discussion today, but I thought I'd say it. Okay. All right, so we'll do. a unique situation, though. Right. Not furloughed because. Sure. Um, I am going to open it up to public input just because someone already asked Addressed me. Addressed it, yeah. I would. Agreed. So I will do that if um, whoever's on the line can state their name and address, please. I'm not aware. Joe, are you aware of If public? anyone's there. Did you see a uh, hand raised? I mean, Christine Nordhaus had said that she wanted to speak. Um, she's uh, enabled to if she wants to. She's not disabled. Um, but she doesn't have her raised hand at this moment. Okay. She's got a dog off leash in Prouty Woods. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll um, circle back with town council and just get some clarification on this, and then we'll, um, we'll bring it back to the board. Okay, so we are on now to um, item number nine, employment agreements with the deputy police chief and deputy fire chief. Back to me. I'm going to again defer to you, Mr. DeCoste. Okay, so I was charged with um, meeting with the deputies and discussing their employment agreements. They're, they, they, I will say that the employment agreements have been just amended year over year, and I would recommend that going into the next agreement that we don't just do an amendment, we just we, we rewrite the whole thing and clean it up and just make sure that uh, we capture everything that we're, we're trying to capture. Um, I think something can be lost when we just do amendments year after year. So it's an amendment to an amendment to an amendment. It ends up getting a little bit messy in my opinion. Um, but in meeting with the two deputies um, and um, discussing if they were satisfied with the agreements as they were, there were a couple of things um, that came up with, the, with regard to um, Deputy Chief Patterson. And he was promised, essentially, by this board um, in past years that um, as a result of a, a, comp and comp, a comp and class study that he was very much underpaid um, to the tune of, I think it was $40,000 at one point in time. There was a, there was a delta um, in his salary compared to with surrounding communities like communities. And um, so we said we'd, the, the term we used, we would make him whole. This year... Um, Deputy Chief Patterson is slated to be get his regular step, which is part of the agreement, which would take him from a step eight to a step nine. And um, we just went through a huge accreditation, a re-accreditation, excuse me. Um, and he, in, in talking with the chief to try to find other ways to make him whole versus giving him another full step, um, the proposal was made and agreed to by the Board of Selectmen that we make Deputy Chief Patterson the accreditation manager and pay him a stipend in the amount of $2,500, above and beyond his, the, the step that he's scheduled to get this year. Um, in addition to that, he is, 
uh, asked that, speaking of stipends, this is the exception I just mentioned when we were talking uh, to the last uh, agenda item. Deputy Patterson is um, requested that he be paid his uniform stipend on July 1st, as the rest of the department and, and to the best of my knowledge, the rest of uh, anyone that gets a uniform stipend or any other stipend versus being paid kind of as he goes along, um, almost like an expense statement. Um, so that's it for Deputy Patterson. As far as Deputy um, Chief Clancy at the fire department, he is happy with where he's at. Uh, we did have some, some conversations relative to vacation time, um, which is something that we're, we're going to continue to discuss. Um, but relative to this year's agreement, we agree to um, take Deputy Clancy from a, a grade 12 step four up to a grade 12 step five. Okay. So I've got that in the form of a motion unless there's any other discussion. Is there any further discussion by the board? Yep. Thank you for your Great. efforts, Chuck. But Move that the board vote pursuant to Master and Law Chapter 41, Section 97A to approve the and authorize execution of an employment agreement amendment. Should I throw that amendment in there? Or just keep it as an employment agreement? If you want to have one, I would say approve the employment agreement, but. Okay. With Deputy Police Chief Jeffrey M. Patterson for the period of 7 1 2020 through 6 30 2021 at grade 12, step 9. And to institute an accreditation manager, institute a stipend for accreditation manager in the amount of $2,500. In addition, which is paid out, excuse me, which is paid on July 1st. In addition to the above, the existing uniform stipend will be paid in a lump sum to the deputy in the first pay period of the new fiscal year, July 1st, um, effective immediately and paid retroactively where appropriate. In addition, do you want to lump these together or? Sure. Move that the board vote pursuant to Master and Law Chapter 41, Chapter 97A to approve and authorize execution of an employment agreement with Deputy Fire Chief George D. Clancy for the period of 7 1 2020 through 6 30 2021 at grade 12, step 5. I second both. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Let me just add so um, the, the same caveat at the end of. Deputy Clancy's uh, paid retroactively where appropriate. So he, if if step five hasn't happened yet, he gets paid retroactively okay. back to uh, July 1st. Excellent. So with that amendment. So we have an amendment to the motion. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, all those in favor, Mr. Nordhaus? Yes. Mr. DeCoast? Yes. Mr. Knox? Aye. Mr. Glavy? Yes. And Cindy Napoli is aye. Um, Right, so thank Thanks. you for that. Well, I don't know if you want to pass that on to. Um, I will. I'll reach out to both of them tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you. And as far as the agreements are concerned, is that something you would like our office to um, work with town council, or will you be working directly with town council on that? To clean them up for next year. Well, I mean, either either one. Yeah, right? I mean, it, it's, we just need a side letter, uh, an addition of the amendment to the. But current? this year, it's an it's an addition to the amendment, so that that language will be captured in an amendment sure. to the amendment. Sure. So year over year, we've been doing that, and rather than you know just tagging along a bunch of um, side letters or so amendments. So we'll work with amendments. town council to get that drafted and then circulate it to the board for. I would, I would say that would be for next year's agreement. For this year's agreement. I'm talking about just the agreement. We do need something formal signed. Right. For this year. Yes. I would say an amendment to the agreement. Right. And so I'm wondering if you'd like our office to work yes. on that. Okay, very good. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you for your work on that. Yeah. Chuck, appreciate it. Okay, so we are on to item number 10, and this is um, the town administrator. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, most of these items are quick. I would say we could probably go through items A through C and E relatively quickly, and I anticipate D may need a little bit of discussion. Um, so for item A, a consolidated claim authorization form for opioid litigation, working with uh, town council and uh, the chairwoman, there was a, uh, there was a deadline that the town was faced with in order to decide whether or not we would pursue a consolidated claim or an individual claim on a prior claim that the town had filed uh, with regard to opioid litigation. And essentially at this point, the question before the board is, does the board wish to continue the course with a consolidated claim or does the board want to file an individual claim? 
in a back and forth exchange a little bit with town council, specifically Donna Brewer. Um, it, it was ultimately recommended, and I'm happy to dive into the details if the board would like, to uh, move forward with a consolidated claim, which I believe Chairwoman Napoli also um, supported. And so we have submitted the necessary paperwork and information in order to maintain our consolidated claim position, but are ultimately needing to ratify that with the board here today because if the board wished to take an individual claim direction, we would ask that our submission be withdrawn and could do so in a timely fashion and then pursue an individual claim. Mm -hmm. Right. It says the town council recommends a consolidated claim. Yeah, that was her recommendation. I think that's strength of numbers good enough for me. Right. <clears throat> no reason to change course. Right. Any other questions or comments? Great. And then item um, do we, B. Do we need to take, we should take the motion? I would say then, yes. Right? Oh, you want to do okay. a motion individually? Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'll move that the board ratify the action of town council and the chair of the board to file a consolidated claim authorization form with consolidated council Brown Rudnick in the opioid bankruptcy litigation of Purdue Farmer and further authorize town council and the town administrator to take whatever actions are necessary to pursue the claim. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Mr. Glavy? Aye. Mr. Knox? Aye. Mr. DeCoast? Aye. Mr. Nordhaus? Yes. And Cindy Napoli is aye. So the motion is approved as written. And now we are on to item number 10B. Thank you, Madam Chair. If you'd like, we can probably take up B and C at the same time, though they are very different events. Uh, there is a application to use the town common to raise awareness of and advocate for the Black Lives Matter movement proposed for August 8th. And there is a commemoration of India's uh, Independence Day proposed on August 15th. In both cases, they have been circulated to the fire chief, police chief, and DPW superintendent director who have all approved the, um, and don't have specific comments or requests or recommendations for the board. The only thing I was gonna ask, Nina, with um, India's Independence Day, I don't know if Dig Safe was ever <coughs> called. I don't believe it has been called at this stage, but uh, it's typically it's a 72-hour notification, so it could okay. certainly be done in a timely fashion. Okay. For flagpole? Yeah, they're, um, they're gonna use standalone uh, flagpoles. I believe that um, they need to put into the Secure ground. Secure wires, yeah. Yeah. To support so, the flagpole. Yeah, instead of like a flagpole like this behind us. But I think we need to clarify that with the applica applicant as well, because he did give two options. He did. Um, so, and then we can, if we need to, we can proceed and call Dick safe. Right. Thank you. And yeah, Chris is aware of that. Yep. yep. Yeah. He mentioned the Dig safe in the yep. application. Yeah. Okay. So Siri, the board could take the two together if you'd like or separate, however the board desires. Is there any questions or comments? Uh, just that the, the motions are different. I guess what I was saying for clarification is that you could just combine the two motions together and read from one to the second but if you'd like to take them up separately you can do them separately. Oh, okay so i'm reading b and c yep please all right then i'll move that the board vote to approve the application of thomas hollinger littleton interact club for use of littleton common august 8th between the hours of 3 p.m and 7 p.m for the black lives matter vigil and in accordance with the conditions for use of the littleton common and also that the board vote, move that the board vote to approve the application of Sanjay Gowda on behalf of India Association of Greater Boston for use of Littleton Common on August 15, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. for India Day and in accordance with the conditions for use of the Littleton Common. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Mr. Glavy? Aye. Mr. Knox? Aye. Mr. DeCoast? Yes. Mr. Nordhaus? Yes. And Cindy Napoli is yes, so the motions are approved as written. Thank you, and we are on to item 10D. Thank you. Um, on this one, uh, I town council. Myself. Sorry. On this, town, on this one, the town council has recommended um, 
has provided some information relative to the board's last discussion relative to revolving accounts. He's indicated that a revolving account cannot be used, unfortunately, and that the only provision that uh, would allow the language to continue as presented would be one that would understand that the funds would be then deposited to the town's miscellaneous revenue account, would have to close to free cash, and then have to get reappropriated in a following year. The alternative to that was uh, an alternative uh, town council, specifically Chris Heap identified this afternoon as well, which might be uh, completing a side letter agreement which may uh, assist with the process. It's not entirely clear to me at this point how the side letter agreement would mechanically work as far as the free cash component is concerned, but I'm sure that town council has some ideas to that extent. I know that town council also said that the applicant would be um, would be committed to solving or resolving and establishing a side letter agreement if the board was to uh, pursue agreeing, uh, signing the host community agreement that was presented without the uh, community benefit payment section included between now and the next, next meeting. meeting. So two options before you to summarize. The first is to enter into the host community agreement including the language that contains the $5,000 community benefit payment, understanding that it would have to close to free cash and get reappropriated through the free cash process. The second option is to omit that part from the host community agreement with the understanding that it would be proposed in a side letter agreement to try to get closer or resolve the request of the board. Okay. I'd recommend the second. I think that's what Chris, you know, that's kind of what we came to an agreement on. It's the would just remove it from from the HCA. Okay. Um, so I'm going on the HCA as written with that was 3D, is it? 3D. Does that affect the motion at all here? Or are we just considering that as a separate item here? Yeah, I'm this not. motion was written prior to this new information, so I would modify the motion to approve the revised host community agreement omitting Section 3D. Yes regarding the community benefit payment as presented um, and go with that. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, in the, uh, well, I don't know which version everybody has. So, yeah, just go ahead and say that because and the one that I'm looking at doesn't have 3D in it. But I don't well, know that's if a good else point. Has yeah, I mean, we could take the <laughs> number out and just say okay. omitting the um, okay. I'll, section. Okay. I guess um, I'll take a stab at this then if you're ready for a motion. Please. Okay. Move that the select board vote to approve the revised host community agreement with the Harvest Club, uh, omitting the section regarding the community benefit um, payment um, as amended by the board. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Mr. DeCoste? Aye. Mr. Knox? Aye. Mr. Glavy? Aye. And Cindy Napoli is aye. Chris Bynum? Alex Kuhn. Alex, yeah, I believe Alex is. Oh, is someone on? Yes. The folks from the Harvest Club, I saw them, I saw them oh, up okay. there earlier. I just didn't know. And we have a hand raise now as a result of that discussion. <laughs> Maybe it looks like, uh, Joe, we can bring them on. Hey, anyway, it's Alex. I just heard my name. I just wanted to say thanks. Oh. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Yeah. No problem. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate you being accommodating and uh, working with us through this. Thanks, Thanks, you too. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. You can invite Matthew back in. Matthew. <laughs> no. Did you get your truck fixed? Who? Hmm? <laughs> well, I haven't heard. I've which I'm assuming is a no. But I don't okay, so we are on, on to e. item 10E. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. I think this is a relatively straightforward one. The Historical Commission is requesting the board's support um, in uh, submitting the Benjamin Kimball House at 12 Robinson Road, also known as the Baker House, um, as towards the nomination for the National Historic Register. There is a draft letter in the packet, which we would circulate by DocuSign, and motion's ready to go, unless the board has any questions. 
I, Okay. I just wanted to come, the Benjamin, Benjamin Kimball house. I had never heard it referred to that before. It's been the Ferb Forbath house. Been it's been the Baker it. house. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. So where, do we know where Benjamin Kimball house derived from? Or I am, That's the first I saw of it. I mean, as, as Chuck alluded to, uh, you know, I always grew up knowing it was the Furbeck house, and but then later it was the Baker house. Right. We buying it. But, yeah. Um, whatever brings us in the uh, gravy, you know. <laughs> right. Whatever they want. Right. Would you like the explanation I received from the Historical Commission some time ago? Sure. On this? I oh, had this, sure. I had the if same you've question, got it, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, so what I received from Chair uh, Watt was that the Benjamin Kimball House, specifically, previous research identified the house as the Baker House. This comes from a late 19th century map which labels the house in the area of the Kimball House as J. Baker. However, this late 19th century map is a conjectural map based on the records of the Littleton proprietor is not based on any 17th or 18th century map. A review of the proprietor's records, though, does not show any land grants or sales to a J. Baker. The property's 18th century history and the circumstances surrounding its construction are still unclear. Because of the conjectural nature of this map, the Kimball name is maintained here as the first confirmed resident of the house. Excellent. Well, when in doubt, Kimball's a good bet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'll move that the board vote to sign the letter of support for the nomination of the Benjamin Kimball House at 12 Robinson Road for the National Register of Historic Places. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? The only thing, Madam Chair, if I can, is just oh, to sure. appreciate uh, a resident who asked the question today, which uh, caused me to look back in my oh. records, pull up that information, <laughs> and have it readily available. your fingertips. So it's nice. <laughs> so thank Excellent. you to Mrs. Ms. Schwartz. Excellent. I thought maybe it was written on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Etched. Yeah. So motion's been made and seconded. Um, all those in favor, Mr. Glavy? Aye. Mr. Knox? Aye. Mr. DeCoast? Aye. Mr. Nordhaus? Yes. And City Napoli is aye. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification, Nina. And we are. Thank you, Sandy Schwartz, for asking me today. Right. Good question. So we're on to minutes. Do you have minutes from the. Uh, Regular session of July 13th, which I was not in attendance at, so I will abstain, but I can make a motion. I can do that much. No, it might be probably appropriate if someone else makes a motion that was there. I didn't have any. Um... Yeah, I had no other additional input. I'll, I'll make the motion yeah, if you're not comfortable. Good to me. Move the board vote to approve the regular session meeting minutes for July 13th, 2020. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Mr. Glavy? Abstain. Mr. Knox? Aye. Mr. DeCoast? Aye. And Mr. Nordhaus? Yes. And I just want to acknowledge Sue Raymond, um, who prepared Ooh. our minutes. She does a wonderful Great job. job. Yep. Um, very much appreciated because it's not an easy job. Thanks, so uh, Madam Chair, uh, I don't know if it's you, but I think the major change has been... Uh, we have our new member. All of a sudden, our meetings are uh, a lot shorter. We're over at 9.15. I'm uh, taking full credit for that. Well, the it's last definitely me. And the last two were 11, though. The huh? last two were 11, so we got off well, the Well, I wasn't at one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, maybe it's you, Matthew. Maybe it's the fellow you replaced. I don't know. You know that, uh, <laughs> no comment. I've been on phone calls <laughs> if you're with you. Out there if you're goes. out there listening, Chase. Uh, <laughs> Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion's in main. Second. All those in favor, Mr. Glady. Aye. Mr. Knox. Aye. Mr. DeCoast. Aye. Mr. Nordhaus. Yes. And Cindy Napoli is aye. Good, e uh, good evening. Good night, everybody. We will see you back on August 10th is our next regularly scheduled meeting. Thank you very much. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.